Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And in this one, I'm going to be showing some of the attacks from One Hive Alpha and One Hive Trinity and talking a little bit about these two clans and some of the league play they're participating in. I like to do these types of videos to kind of highlight the achievements and the progress of other clans in the One Hive Genesis family, especially because for people interested in joining our clan family, you go through One Hive Trinity first and then possibly to One Hive Alpha and eventually to One Hive Genesis, but it's a, a bit of a ladder that you have to climb. It's not direct uh, acceptance into One Hive Genesis. So it gives you a good idea of kind of the clans that you might be able to join and some of the league wars they're participating in because it's not just One Hive Genesis that's in these leagues. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the attacks and talk about this. Um, this first attack is coming to us. It's a 10v11 attack we're showing first from One Hive Alpha's victory in the quarterfinals of MCWL. That stands for Minor League Clan Wars. It's like a lighter version, um, a lighter breakdown in terms of town hall levels, and I think less uh, less accounts, um, less people in the wars. It's like 30 v 30, I want to say, maybe 25 v 25. I'll double check after this attack, but um, it's a lighter version, and they just won their quarterfinal matchup against highly active, a very close war, and um, had some great attacks. We'll take a look at a 10 v 10 here, but first... Uh, you can see 71 to 70 was the result, so a very close one. Um, taking a look at the war map here, got the 11s two-starred, and then most of the 10s were tripled. There is indeed 25 uh, on each side here. They got one nice 11 v 11, um, but they weren't able to get it done on the Town Hall 10s as much as One Hive Alpha was, and that was really the difference in this war. So um, that being said, we'll go ahead and take a look at some more attacks here, um, and we'll also hop into One Hive Trinity very briefly and look at some attacks there. But um, this one was a nice 10v10. Um, let's talk a little bit as well about some of the requirements because this video, uh, I hope, will be something I can also direct people to if they have questions about the requirements to join the clan. Uh, this attack, by the way, a very, very nice queen charge. Um, the wall breaking is insane on this attack uh, that you'll see right here. Using the king as a funnel, and then the wall breakers are just going to go through this base like a knife through butter, basically. But anyway, um, the way that our clan family is structured, we have One Hive Genesis, which is the has the majority of the Town Hall 11s and Town Hall 10s. It's, it's kind of the heaviest clan in terms of war weights and it's participating in CWL Invite, I guess you could say the top of the CWL leagues, and One Hive Alpha is basically a sister clan. It participates in MCWL. This is the clan we're looking at right now that won uh, this last week in the quarterfinals of the MCWL season, and uh, they are also actively recruiting and um, looking to be a very competitive clan in these uh, types of clan war leagues. Uh, One Hive Genesis, by the way, is I don't believe we're actively recruiting, um, but we do slowly move people up from some of the other clans as they progress through the family because we're always looking for the best attackers to end up in One Hive Genesis. Uh, One Hive Trinity is kind of the third clan, you could call it. It is where most tryouts go. It is also participating in uh, MCWL, Next season, it'll be the first of the league play it participates in. So it'll be joining One Hive Alpha in MCWL, which is very exciting because it'll be a third clan joining into the league play system. And then finally, One Hive Origins is a place for uh, accounts that are lower level, Town Hall 8s, underdeveloped. Um, but it's a place where you can get a sense of the family, of how the system works, and upgrade and eventually start moving into more competitive wars in the other three clans. Okay, so that all being said, a few of the requirements as we move on to a nice Town Hall 9 attack. We'll take a look at a couple of these uh, to finish off the video, and I think we might have one 10v10. 
um, from One Hive Trinity. I forgot what I recorded over there. It might be a 10v10. I guess we'll just kind of wait and see. But um, One Hive Trinity, which is, I guess, the bottom of the war clans, and it's typically the tryout clan for new recruits trying to join the family. The requirements, Town Hall 9, you want to have 20, 25, or 25, 25 heroes. So each hero, 25 minimum which is pretty much close to max. And I know that's kind of a steep requirement, but it's just because there's so many Town Hall 9s out there. It it kind of allows slash forces us to be selective in taking only some of the maxed, if not close to max, Town Hall 9s. For Town Hall 10s, it's pretty much the same thing. You have to have 35, 35 heroes or above. And um, that, again, is very close to being maxed, which is... It reflects the fact that we're a clan war focused uh, clan family participating in league wars where pretty much all the accounts in these league wars have to be maxed out, if not very, very close to max for their respective town hall levels. And finally, for town hall 11, uh, you have to have 40, 40 heroes. So that's max for town hall 10, as well as a fully maxed level 20 grand warden. Those are the requirements. I don't believe we're accepting Town Hall 8s and below at this point. So it's those three Town Hall levels that are typically associated uh, with League play. Um, that's for One Hive Trinity. For One Hive Alpha, One Hive Genesis, um, I'm not positive, but as far as I know, you're going to have to be a maxed out account um, for your Town Hall level, especially in terms of offense, in order to... To, to join one of those clans and be participating in the uh, League Wars. So that's kind of giving you guys a taste of the, the system. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at another Town Hall 9 attack here by Don Key Punch. Uh, this one was just a nice Queen Walk Hog attack. The Queen's going to meet up with a Golem Bowler Kill Squad, cut through the base, get to those Expos and Wizard Towers on the top left which are definitely um, important because they tend to hold up the hogs and getting those taken out with the kill squad just makes everything a lot easier. The only downside is the king will stay up and he'll mess with the hogs a little bit, but that is manageable as long as everything else uh, goes well. So the, uh, the queen meets up right here, gets those wall breakers down just in time. Had the cannon not been uh, still up at that time, they would have targeted a different wall probably. So you got to be careful to get the wall breakers down as soon as possible and uh, have them target the right defense and open things up. There's the jump spell. Um, gets that down in time as well. Poison on the CC and a rage on the kill squad. It looks like, yep, there he goes. And I believe this was a cleanup attack. I love how patient he was on these hogs, dropping a giant to tank, a few hogs, just sprinkling them in. The Tesla farm looks like it has some spring traps. So doesn't want to throw down a bunch of hogs and have them get hit by the springs. And then just nice and patient working his way around. I think he even starts cleanup here because you'll notice on these heavy kill squad attacks at Town Hall 9, your kill squad's going to stay up for most of the attack and you want to basically start using the hogs uh, periodically as defenses are being tanked as well as start cleanup as soon as possible because time can be an issue when you don't have that many hogs and you have to wait on a slow kill squad to move through the base. Um, let me see if there's anything else information-wise I want to give you on the clans. I think I pretty much covered all the major details. If you guys don't know, um, it's I've been kind of posting a lot of this on the channel. A lot of content from One Hive Genesis in CWL Invite. But if you don't know, we are 3 and 1 currently. Just had that loss to uh, Warzone 68 that we streamed last uh, hour of on this channel. That was a lot of fun. Um, kind of hanging out and a very, very close, exciting ending. Disappointing because we lost, of course, but looking to bounce back. In the next week, we have a bye coming up. Um, this weekend and then the following week we're back to it. There's so many buys, it's kind of weird how it's structured. I'm not sure the exact reason why, but um, for the for the middle part of the season, it's pretty much every other week is a buy until you get to the last few weeks where we have a few consecutive wars. So anyway, 
One Hive Genesis probably not taking on any new uh, members for the season. The rosters are kind of finalized. I mean, there are, there are there is like a little bit of flexibility, I believe, in the actual system of how of how it works. But for the most part, our rosters are pretty much finalized. On this attack here, um, nice 11 v 11. I would have dropped a wizard or two behind the king. The queen does go the correct way, but it was made way too close. And a few wizards could have taken out the mortar. And I believe it was like a bomb tower or something else. Not a bomb tower. It could have taken out the buildings in that little compartment on the top right of the base. And that would have helped everything kind of go the right direction because the queen almost walked and the king got caught on the wall which could have been avoided by throwing a few wizards behind the king uh, this was though what i was talking about it's not a 10 v 10 it's an 11 v 11 that i wanted to show from one hive trinity and uh, very nice attack it's getting easier to take out these anti two-star bases with town hall 11s um for three stars after the update Inferno Towers were, I think, nerfed again. It takes longer for the single Infernos to increase to max damage, which does, lets those Lava Hounds last a little bit longer. But overall, these anti-two-star bases, attackers are finding ways to take them out. And, uh, oops, sorry about the notification. Uh, that game is, if you guys know what HQ is, it. I won't go into details because this is a Clash of Clans video, but uh, that's an annoyingly... Uh, annoying game slash app to play and have so I won't go into details but if you do check it out um, it's a little bit frustrating and it's something that I play with a lot of my friends and I'm yet to be successful in it but you guys might not know what I'm talking about if you don't know what that app is anyway getting back to this one has a ton of balloons left up this is one of the strategies that we're seeing is this queen charge la Luna attack and it works very well you can even put the warden with the queen, as we saw here. Um, but we're going to finish this one off with a Town Hall 9 from One Hive Trinity. Had to show at least two attacks from Trinity because they, like I said, are also um, transitioning into being a clan that participates in these league wars like One Hive Alpha and One Hive Genesis. And that's a big step for Trinity, which kind of has been a tryout clan and will continue, I think, to be somewhat of a tryout clan. But it's a big step for Trinity in terms of now also um, participating in these types of wars. And it's nice to see the family growing like this because we love having um, as many members as possible, makes the Discord channel more fun, and just makes it a better experience for everyone in the clan family. Now, this was just a very simple kill squad based attack it turns out we have a 10v10 as well from one hive trinity um, i actually for some reason thought it was like two 9v9s or something but uh, the 9v9s i guess were coming from one hive alpha these are some of the heavy hitter attacks and this one was just nice and simple um easy base identification the king the queen and an inferno tower all placed in the top compartment makes it easy just to use a few giants the heroes and some bowlers to bite off a big chunk of the base and um, send in the hogs. Doesn't even need to use a jump spell, so he has four heals for his hogs as they move through the base, and I think has like a solid 30 hogs or so. Um, plenty to take out the back end. The queen still up. The ability allows her to kind of avoid some of those expos and other defenses that were on her for a moment, and uh, she will continue to do work for these hogs has that last heal, which has to be dropped kind of awkwardly. Um, wasn't really a good way to do it, to be honest. Just had to drop it um, somewhere to get those hogs healed up. And it was kind of between defenses, but it still worked. Still got those last few hogs back to full health, which was necessary because they were actually pretty low in numbers towards the end. They take out those skellies, and the king somehow is still up. Not the queen, but the king and he helps finish off the base as well as a few wizards. But thanks for watching. Hope this video was um, was interesting. Hope you liked the attacks. And if you are interested in applying, check out the link in the description for our recruitment server. And that's where you're going to apply uh, using that link to the Discord server. So anyway, see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bisectatron out.